Loss of generation capacity and a spike in demand caused by the heat wave have been blamed for the stage six load shedding that ESCOM has implemented until Monday. At a briefing yesterday, Electricity Minister Josienzo Ramachopa said that there was a need to replenish emergency reserves to protect the grid. He said South Africans should expect things to get better with the lowest stages of load shedding in the festive season as some intensive energy users would be closing, planned maintenance would also be ramped up and more units would be returned online. So to help us make sense of this and more. We're going to be joined by teams by Professor Hartmut Winkler, an energy energy analyst. Prof, um, good afternoon mm -hmm. and thank you for your time with us here on the SABC. Yeah. Good afternoon. Prof, for context's sake, perhaps you could just get your reaction on the back of this announcement um, given that um, you know the minister cited reasons due to a shortage of generating capacity and emergency reserves with the festive season also approaching and the heat wave. Um, what, what is what um, is coming to the fore for you, or the concerns that are coming to the fore for you, um, for you at this point? All right, L let us just start off by saying that it, to me it's not unexpected that we're still having serious power problems right now. Okay. I think we did extraordinarily well in the months from about June uh, to October uh, to keep load shedding stages to uh, better levels than most of us would have expected. Uh, but what we're seeing right now is more what I would have thought would have happened round about now, given that our power stations are all very old, the, co the coal power station, they're all very old, and they're liable to break down quite often, given that they've been driven very hard. So in that sense, it's not unusual. It's just that the expectation had been raised that we are on a, on a positive trajectory already. I don't think we're quite there yet there. I think what we have managed to do this this, this last year is to stop uh, the situation from getting worse, but we are not yet in, in a situation where uh, things are actually getting better. And ultimately, to solve the, the electricity crisis, a lot more will have to happen than what has happened uh, until now. Uh, we are going to need more uh, uh, power generation capacity, and some of that, that cannot come uh, as, as fast as we would like it to, to come. Uh, even the, the, the solar and wind power stations, which are the quickest to build, take a minimum of two years to get ready. So uh, I'm afraid we're still going to have power problems for quite a long time, uh, but uh, the situation might start gradually improving from next year. But uh, be prepared for uh, 2024 still having uh, lots of load shedding. Uh, hopefully not as bad as this year, but, uh, but it's still going to be substantial. So as far as the reasons why we're now at, at stage six, mm. uh, various things have been mentioned. And none of those to me are, 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 are as, as, as critical factors as they've been made out to be. I think it's quite normal that one needs to replenish uh, reserves over the weekend. That's been happening uh, all along. So that shouldn't be anything new. People talk about the heat wave, but that doesn't then explain why uh, the demand went up fr from Thursday to Friday, both of which were equally hot days. Yet on Friday, the, um, uh, we were at roughly one and a half stages of load shedding. Uh, well, the demand was higher, which it necessitated going from stage four to uh, stage six. So uh, uh, to me, I, th I don't think it's, uh, it's something which is, uh, is uh, unexpected. It's something uh, we, we're going to, probably going to be fluctuating between stages two and, and six for quite a, quite a while still. It's true over Christmas, as always, the situation is usually better. Um, but uh, come the new year, I think we again going to be having uh, 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 power cuts uh, on a fairly regular basis. Prof, thank you for that context and for those sentiments. At this point, what comes to the fore in relation to ESCOM's use of diesel? Um, it's for its open cycle gas turbines. Mm -hmm. And are there concerns that the entity will run out of diesel supplies? Will this also force um, you know, load shedding to be ramped up further? Help us understand that a little bit better as well. Yes, well, that was one point that was yesterday, uh, uh, a question was raised by, by a member of the media about that, whether a shortage of diesel is the reason why we are where we are now. Uh, Eskom said, no, it's not the case. Uh, so I'm assuming on that basis that they do have a sufficient diesel right now. Uh, at the same time, diesel is a very expensive way of, of keeping the lights on. Uh, it, it should be avoided. It's really only there when you have absolutely no other recourse. So uh, for much of this year, uh, the, uh, uh, 
the um, open cycle gas turbines have been running uh, uh, almost uh, non-stop, which is not what should be happening. They should be kept for a special situation. And that's uh, resulted in a much higher cost than usual. You might recall that uh, roughly this time last year, uh, Eskom actually ran out of money for diesel. This year, they haven't reached that point yet, be simply because they've been given more money uh, to keep things going. Uh, but whether there is, if there is some uh, any kind of threat to the diesel supply at the moment, I haven't uh, no, I haven't heard it mentioned. So it, we should still be fine on that on that front. All right, Prof, because we also know that um, the minister mentioned an additional buffer um, of megawatts. Um, unit 2 and 5 will come online at Kusili in about two weeks and also mid-December. So that mm -hmm. does offer some reprieve. I wonder if we could look at the issue of leadership, yes. the impact of, of leadership at the SOE, how it's impacting operations, and how at this point could ESCOM be operating differently in the future to be reducing load shedding or, or even offer just mm -hmm. some reprieve? Yeah, quite honestly, I don't think it's so much a question of leadership right now. Uh, it, it, it's true that back over the last decade, if there had been more consistent leadership and, uh, and if state capture hadn't happened, we probably would be in a much better situation. But right now, whether uh, whether you have the current acting uh, 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 CEO, whether you have whoever the board uh, nominated or whether you have you or me running Eskom, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference over the coming few uh, few months. Uh, ISCOM is, is, is a large enough organization that, uh, that essentially what happen, happens on, on, the, uh, on a power station level is, uh, is largely driven uh, by uh, uh, people who understand those uh, facilities best. And uh, um, who, uh, the, the CEO as such is not able to do much about it. That's also why people shouldn't have great hopes that once a, a new CEO is, is announced, that things are going to turn around anytime soon. Uh, they, they're in a role where there's very little they can ultimately do. They can just try and, and, and make sure that the backup is as, as, as good as it possibly could be, but, uh, but ultimately they themselves are not going to make a major difference. Prof, I have to wrap up this convo due to time, but just very quickly, I want to explore the issue of sabotage quickly. Any hint of that? And are there fears on your end about reaching, you know, higher stage of load shedding, stage seven perhaps, um, given the expectations people had, um, given the positive trajectory we've been experiencing in managing the crisis thus far? Yeah, the minister explicitly said that he has no evidence of uh, sabotage at the moment. At the same time, uh, the, the breakdowns of our, since they are a little bit higher than they have been in, in, in recent months, uh, always raises a suspicion that maybe uh, whoever has been behind this in the past might be uh, getting a little bit braver again and think that the time is right that this can be, be done again. If it is sabotage, it's probably on a very uh, small scale. It's, it wouldn't uh, cause us to go all the way to stage six. It might, however, account for one or possibly even two stages. But as I said, the minister hasn't uh, says he hasn't got any evidence of that. As far as going to higher stages, yes. Well, you never know if if uh, if two power stations fail in this very hour, we are going to go to a higher stage. That's unfortunately how things are. We never really quite know uh, what, what exactly is going to happen.